What's up, today we're gonna go over the top 5 deadliest opening traps for bullet 1 minute games, let's rock! Today we're gonna talking about the first king spawn move pony 4 as it's the most popular. Now after pony 5, knight of 3, knight c6 we enter the most common opening sequence and here we are gonna play the drunk knight variation. d4 attacks this pawn, threatens to go forward, therefore your opponents will capture it and here comes knight to g5. It's not the most solid way of playing but hey, in bullet it, the most important thing is just to play something unexpected for your opponent and to be aggressive. This way you'll either checkmate your opponent or he'll run out of time trying to figure out the right defense. So after knight g5 this knight is annoying and put some pressure here, you're ready to team up with the bishop and get this pawn on f7, therefore h6 is very natural for black to try to kick this knight away, but you don't back down, you just sack the knight on f7 inviting the king to go forward into this deadly walk. Now you follow up with bishop c4, check to the king. And here let me show you something interesting. In order to prepare this video I went to Leech's database and sorted out just bullet games so that I do know that I'm pro providing you some opening traps that do work in bullet, okay? And now when we're all set you can see that in bullet the most played move by black by far, 64% of players played it king to e8 which walks straight into scholars kind of checkmate after queen h5. Again in bullet people don't have time to think they react just you know naturally play the most obvious move and in this case after king e7 and queen to f7 that leads to a nearly checkmate. At this point you have different ways to checkmate black either e5 or bishop f4 both ways win. For example e5 is quite could be quite nasty after king takes you can finish it off with queen to f4 checkmate. Now the second trap involves the Ponziani opening which we're gonna follow along with the unknown variation. So here you play pawn to c3 getting ready for playing d4 on the next move. In most cases your opponents will play knight of 6. Some of them will actually play bishop c5 as it's a standard move that they play in other openings such as the Italian game. But that walks straight into your pawn push pawn e4, this time you're chasing the bishop, the pawn is ready to go forward and chase away the knight and here you grab significant advantage right out of the gate. So instead of bishop c5, knight of 6 is better and it's the most played move, you still play d4 challenging black center. They'll usually capture here on d4 and instead of recapturing you tossing this in between move pawn e5 attacking the knight. They're gonna bring the knight to d5 and now once again instead of getting your pawn back you play actively by playing bishop c4 and pressuring this knight. As it goes back and counter attacks the bishop you drop the bishop back on b3 and now this bishop is really active along this diagonal. Black sees that this pawn is under the attack therefore they trades it off. And so far I mean you're just heading development and you have some potential for attack. The most played move in this position by black is bishop b4, which is understandable. They want to castle quickly, put their king to safety, they want to pin your knight, but in fact bishop b4 is not the best move to play. And now you rush into the attack by going knight g5. Again, we want to be bold and aggressive, that's what pays off in bullet really well. After knight g5, the correct move for black is difficult to spot, it's the move pawn to d5, which involves some difficult calculation. In most cases your pawns will play reactively, castle king side, hoping to defend this pawn with the rook, but that walks into queen h5, which just overpowers black. You simply have way too much pressure, you know, against these squares f7 and h7, and black loses the game. In order to stop you from checkmating them that way, they have to push the pawn forward, but then you grab this knight, with the knight you grab the pawn, attack the queen, this bishop is still deadly active along this diagonal. They have to drop the rook basically and after a bishop takes, now you're already ahead of material, you're attacking the king and if it tries to hide in the corner you can finish it off with bishop takes h6, completely exposing the king which leads to a quick checkmate. The third trap is when you start with a bit mysterious move knight to f3 but it also sets the stage for the following trap. Knight of 3 takes away this e5 square, therefore black can no longer push the e pawn forward and they'll usually end up playing pawn to d5 instead. But then you gambit the central pawn by playing pawn e4. Your opponent captures this pawn in most cases because why not? That's an extra pawn and it attacks the knight. You jump with the knight forward to g5, aiming to counter take this pawn and after knight to f6 you kind of make it seem like you gave up on an attempt to get your pawn back so you just play pawn to d3. At this point your opponent is happy, they have double pawns along the e-file and they can easily trade off one of them. After a pawn takes, bishop takes, currently your opponent is just up pawn and the only thing that bothers them a little bit is this knight on g5. 
together with the bishop it puts some pressure on h7 pawn and overall it's a bit annoying to have this knight on black territory. Therefore, in most cases they play pawn h6, which walks straight into your Tennyson gambit trap. Knight takes f7. Knight x f7 delivers this fork to the queen and rook, therefore black has to capture it, but after that bishop takes g6 is a discovered attack of the queen. They have to move the king, which drops the queen on d8, and that's how you expose their king, get a decisive true advantage, and win the game. If you enjoy this trap, I've got another video where I cover how you can use the very same tennis and trap across various different openings. So if you're curious, after you've done with this video, you can click the link in the description and check out that video about this particular trap. Here comes a trap for black, and that is also a trap that your opponents are, for the most part, completely unaware of. Now, you enter the Sicilian defense, they play knight of 3, the main line, and here you play a mysterious pawn to a6. In the vast majority of the cases, your opponents will play the main move pawn to d4, because what else can they do? I mean, if they try bishop c4, very often, you know, you can just push forward with b5 and, um, you know, just capture their bishop that way. If it goes to d5, I mean, temporarily it hits your rook, but then you'll anyway follow up with e6. So they, in most cases, will not play that. Instead, usually they'll play the standard move pawn to d4. And it's hard to believe that this move is already wrong. Okay, so you take here on d4, white recaptures, knight of 6, attacks this pawn on e4. In most cases, they defend it. You, you don't worry about this pawn being pushed forward, because here you've got queen a5, which double attacks this pawn and king on e1, thus you grab the pawn on the next move, so that doesn't bother you, that's quite cool. After knight c3, you play the move pawn e5, and finally, we can see the point of our move pawn to a6. This knight can no longer jump to b5, where ideally it, it would wish to go, and from there it can jump to d6, so this pushes the knight back. And if they go back, then you continue your attack by going bishop b4. This time you're pinning the knight down to the king, and as the knight can't move anymore, that creates the threat of your knight taking on e4. Some of your pawns will simply blunder this pawn, those who don't will play bishop d3. Now I play pawn d5, challenging the center once again, threatening pawn takes. Therefore your opponent takes on d5, expecting you to recapture, and here comes a boom. You play pawn e4, and that wins the, the piece, because that's a double attack to these two minor pieces. Remember that the knight can never move, because it's pinned down to the king. Therefore if bishop takes and knight takes on e4, this knight cannot move, and, you know, you keep attacking and you're already up a piece, so that should give you enough material advantage to win. And finally, here comes the most brutal chess opening. You just sack all the pawns consecutively one after the other. Pawn takes bishop to c4, known as the Danish Gambit. Your idea is just to get a significant lead in development, and your both bishops are extremely active, already putting strong pressure. In most cases, black goes bishop b4, trying to win a tempo for development, you cover the king by playing knight to c3. Here black goes knight of 6, trying to develop and also getting ready to castle on the next move. Now, you keep attacking by playing pawn to e5, forcing this knight to move. There aren't that many good squares for the knight to go to, given the fact that your queen takes away these two. So black does not want to undevelop their knight, and the only square left is knight to e4, which is already wrong. And the move that I suggest to play here, there are different ways to go about this, but the move that I suggest is queen to d5, and that's the move that works tremendously well in bullet. What's the point? Well, you threaten queen takes f7 checkmate, and besides that, you threaten to grab the knight on e4. Usually, black first trades here on c3, because when your opponent is under pressure, they have this tendency to try to trade off pieces, thinking that it's going to simplify their defense. It's not necessarily the case. In fact, this bishop c3 move does not change anything. I mean, yeah, that was an exchange, but the main threat is still alive. In most cases in bullet, your opponents cannot find the right move here. They simply castle, allowing you to win this knight on e4. And besides that, you're way ahead in development anyway. You could reroute your bishop to d3, aiming for queen h7, checkmate knight of 3. I mean, that should be easily winning for white anyway, and that's how the game usually ends here. Now you may wish to check out the video I mentioned earlier about the tennis and gambit trap and how you can use it across various different openings that your opponents may try to play against you. I'll drop a link down below in the description. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing so that I can do my best to help you win more games and enjoy chess. Have a great rest of the day. Take care.